Hello and welcome to the Points Brew podcast. It's episode 59 and Aaron, we're resigned to the respective man caves once again, aren't we? We are, yes, yes. It's nice today, I get comfortable now. So I just have a nice little uh, sit down in, the, in my nice chair, although you can't see it's a bit low today. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, on my nice chair with my, uh, with my lead scarf, donning yeah. the wall. And uh, yeah, look outside, I've got a nice view of the trees. So yeah, no, I'm happy, I'm happy. Yeah, we can't we can't see below. Thankfully, what he's not telling us is just sat in his pants. He doesn't have to get dressed to go do a podcast at uh, your oh, craft that, beers. Mate, he just always got pants on. I can't afford to put bloody eating on, so I can't <laughs> sit here. We know we know we know kegs on, can I? So no, a minute when it's going to be about minus ten overnight. You know, <laughs> snow's coming. Snow's coming this week, isn't it? So so yes, we're resigned <laughs> to the respective man caves after a successful launch of our uh, collaboration beer, which I'm sure we'll. Uh, I'm sure we'll discuss at some point, but we're uh, we're not flying solo this evening. We are we are joined once again, hence the reason why we're uh, at our respective houses. We are joined by James Bailing, the head brewer from Play Bruco. How are you doing, James? You okay? Hello, yeah, I'm very good. Glad to be here. No, thank you very, very much for joining us. I uh, apologise. I'll apologise again to slightly delaying this podcast. It seemed that everything was conspiring against us today. We planned it for five o'clock and we're a little bit behind as traffic was uh, a bit of a nightmare. Uh, from picking uh, picking Seb up from his uh, his grandparent daycare today, so yes, we uh, a little bit behind, but appreciate you joining, mate. So um, Aaron, unfortunately, is drinking uh, a cup of tea as well. So Aaron, I was going to drop you a beer off on the way home today, um, but again, something else oh. conspired against me. Nobody told me our road was shut. You, you, like the, the oh, road yeah. to your house is shut, so I came to turn left and go. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll surprise Aaron. I'll drop him some beer off, and then up oh, diversion. So I had to go all the way up to Kipax, go all the way back down to Great Preston to just go pick Blooming Seb up. And I was like, well, I, I'm not, yeah. I, can't, I can't turn around here, can I? I can't Sorry t- about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you didn't create the diversion, did you, mate? Do you know what I mean? But No, no, but yeah, I could have said. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, well, I, I, if I'd have told you, you'd have probably said something. But yeah, so I was going to drop some beer off, but Aaron's unfortunately drinking some tea. So uh, No, so, it's all right, I got me tea. Yeah, so. a little posh dash under mug, look at that. It's a dash under a bow tie. It's a nice big one, mm. so. That's for keep you lovely nice and warm, warm mate. You best, you best drink it all. Don't let that go cold, mate. Not with not with electric. No, bars. no, I won't. <laughs> 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 but before we uh, before we detour any more, James, again, thank you uh, very very much for joining. Um, but do you want to jump in straight away um, and give us a, a a brief rundown on your brewing history up until the point to where we are now, where you're uh, brewing for for play. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I sort of started my brewing career. I did. I actually did music at university, and then uh, obviously not much came of that. Um, <laughs> so I'm not headlining Glastonbury this year. So, uh, um, so I got. I was working in a pub in um, uh, Stokesley, which is which is a town not far from Play, actually, mm. uh, which is based in Middlesbrough, um, and. I was just working part time on the bar, but there was there was a brewery attached. So it's called the Captain Cook Brewery. So they brew all their own ales in house. Mm-hmm. Um, they never they never sold any of the beers out, but it does have quite a quite a good um, reputation locally um, amongst ale drinkers. Um, and I was fascinated. Um, I've I've always I've always liked beer. Um, my dad ran pubs for my entire life. Um, so I've always been surrounded by beer and beer drinkers. Um, obviously, what I do now is quite different to what I grew up surrounded by. Um, but we'll sort of get to that, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, it was I, basically I sort of was fascinated by the beer and the brewing. And I sort of once I got a you know a bit of a look at it, I'd never seen anyone brew any beer before. I'd never. It was very much a mystery to me. Um, and. I spoke to the brewer there and just said, would you, would you be open for me to come in and helping you out? Um, and I don't know many brewers that would turn that offer down. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, uh, he jumped at the opportunity um, and, you know, had me, had me cleaning tanks. I mean, there was a, this brewery, there was no CIP. So the, the, Ooh. it was literally climb in uh, yeah. <laughs> to the open top vat with a, with a, with a pair of rubber gloves and a and a sponge, and uh, <laughs> scrub it clean. And I I tell you what, if if 
I mean, I didn't put me off, so I must really love it. <laughs> I was yeah, say, yeah, yeah. You're still, here. you're still doing it now. So. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, I've got a bit of a uh, bit of uh, all of the tanks are a CIP now. But uh, so yeah, uh, we used to brew on a six fifty liter kit. Um, I'm not sure what that is in barrel for 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 the people that work in barrels, but um, I think it's about five. If I'm mm. I'm not yeah, really sure. Yeah, yeah. About five barrel. Uh, anyway, and yeah, we just did sort of a range of about six, seven, um, very traditional English style ales. They were recipes that had uh, changed very, very little over the mm. over the twenty years that that brewery's been going. Um, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You, you know. Um, so that was where I sort of learnt my trade. Um, and the the brewer there at the time, Alan was, you know, he was he was good with me. I mean, I worked, I, I, you know, I worked hard. I tried tried to soak up as much information from him as I could. Um, he'd been doing it sort of seven years, um, so he he obviously knew a lot more than I did at that point. And um, yeah, I learned a lot from him. Um, and he ended up going on the sick for a while. Uh, so I sort of started doing it all by myself at this point mm. um, and loved it. I loved the the sort of responsibility. And because I worked in the pub where these beers were being brewed, you know, I'd get feedback from all the all the customers who were drinking it. Um, some of it was well received. Some of it I'd rather they kept to themselves. But that's <laughs> that's the life of a brewer, I guess. It's the nature um, of it, sadly, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so once once he came back from the sick, I sort of thought, well, uh, you know, because there was no outselling of the beer as such, it, it was it was it was it, it hit its hit its limits really. Um, mm. So I thought, well, it's probably time to move on. Um, and then I got a job at Helmsley Brewery, okay, um, uh, which is not. Uh, I would say probably half an hour north of York um, mm. and worked there for about 12 months. It was a similar sort of thing um, where we'd brew on a similar sort of size kit. It was all a bit more modern and that thankfully had CIP, which was an absolute godsend as far as I was concerned at that point. <laughs> I had no idea life could be that good. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so that was all, you know, again, traditional English real ales, leaf hops, um, bottles and cask heavy. Uh, and we sold beer out to all of the local food pubs in the area. Um, there's some beautiful pubs around there. If anyone is ever down there, I would I would strongly recommend, um, you know, there's some great food pubs um, and you might be able to try some Helmsley beer as well, mm. which is... Not a bad thing. They have, again, they have good beers. Um, so that was, and I feel like that was probably where I learned what a more sort of uh, commercial brewery was like um, because yeah. we were brewing a lot more there. Um, I learned about bottling, which I'd never done at Captain Cook. That was all cask. Um, and yeah, that was, it sort of got me up to speed. Um, I'd sort of learned the, 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 the trade a bit but I was very much off the pace of a, of a of a sort of commercial brewery I'd say and and that that definitely um sped me up a bit um and then when I'd say when play reopened after the first lockdown I didn't um I didn't even know it was there for a while and mm. then when I found I found found out it was there I thought oh, I'm gonna have to go and um, go down and, and try some of the beers because I love. I'd been to Brew York a few times to the tap room. Craft beer was still pretty new to me at this point. Um, yeah. I was very much still trying new beers, trying beers from breweries like uh, Verdant, Turning Point, um, <laughs> Brew York, Northern Monk, uh, all of these guys that sort of you know set the standards in the early days, mm. um, and it, and. It was still very much a mystery to me. Um, and then I went down and I thought, I got to play and I thought, wow, this is just, it's 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 crazy that this has exists in Middlesbrough. You know, the closest <laughs> place you could really go for something like this was 
was York or, yeah. or Newcastle. Um, and I got chatting to Phil, the owner, who I believe you've spoken to before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A long time yeah. ago. Um, and I mentioned I was a brewer and stuff, and then he sort of said, oh, sort of took a bit of an interest in that. And I thought, oh, okay, something... Uh, Anyway, he gave me his, his card and I, I left just not really thinking much of it. And six months later, he, he gave me a call and said, do you want to come down and have a chat about a job? And I said, I'd, oh, absolutely, love to, I'd absolutely love to. Um, I think he was getting sort of contract brewers in at that point mm. Um, mm. because he was still very, the, the business was still very new. It was still finding its feet, still st- sort of establishing itself. Um, and then And then, yeah, and I came in and, um we started brewing more we've 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 since i've been with play for i would say 18 months maybe just over 18 months now probably closer to 20 um and since in that time we've we've got our own canning line now we've trebled the amount of uh, fermenters we have um and got various other upgrades and things to make my life a little bit easier uh, we've just hired an apprentice um, because as the sort of business has grown, I, I have inevitably had more uh, admin and paperwork and things to do, mm. which mm-hmm. is is not my favourite part of the job, but it is, <laughs> it is unfortunately part of the big part of the job. It's got to so. be done, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, and that that sort of brings us up to the to the to the present day, really. Yeah, that's great. That is great, and and I think. In some respects, Aaron, I think maybe, maybe you'll um, agree, really, or maybe sort of agree what I'm going to say is that, you know, from learning there, James, to sort of, you know, learning a bit more traditional side mm-hmm. of things, a bit more traditional real ale and all that, and getting a good grounding, a good foothold. And I think, I think Aaron, you know, yourself at Quirky, I think you've got that nice foothold. If you sort of learn, learn your trade, you learn your, you know, your important bases and basics of yeah. what you need to do and how to do it. And then obviously since then, you know, recently you've been, Pushing more at quirky, Aaron, haven't you? The more contemporary stuff, the modern stuff, the more yes. hazy and hoppy stuff, James. Which then you moved on to it at play. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's good that you've got that grounding and then been able to expand it and, uh, and adapt onto it and then sort of keep growing your knowledge beyond what you like, say, rather than sitting and stagnating, you can keep pushing, pushing browns, like you say, from Captain Cook, then to going to Helmsley to then learning how to bottle, then going to play to canning and brewing different styles of beer. And Aaron, you're you're doing the same at the moment, aren't you? Really, with the things that quirky as well. It is, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Very, very, very similar. Um, in in that regard. Also, I I love the story as well. It's just a really nice story of of how you've how you've gone into it and 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 then gone on. Um, you know, popping in to go and have a beer. Just thinking, oh, I'm just gonna go for a beer and have <laughs> and have fun. And then half a year later, get a random call saying. Oh, I want you to come down and uh, and do this uh, and do this brewing like for me. Well, so, uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't believe he he took me seriously because I I made an effort to drink every single beer on the bar. That's and probably, probably why you got. The I job. probably spoke to him about uh, I would say a good seven or eight beers in. Mm. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised I made any sense at all. But uh, I, must I have, think that's must why have you've left got a it. reasonable. Imp- <laughs> yeah, probably, I was going to yeah. say, it was like, God, this guy's still sat up. He's still. Lit. He can still understand what he's <laughs> saying. It's like, yeah, he needs a job. This guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy. No serious. interview needed. Yeah. He can handle his beer. Yeah, yeah. Get him in. Yeah. Well, like like you say though, James, I I've spoke to Phil a couple of times through work from from Yorkshire Craft Beers. He's usually the one that comes and delivers the beers when when we order from him. And certainly I only got familiar with play during lockdown and COVID because I got the job with Yorkshire Craft Beers and I hadn't heard of you guys up until that point. And I think that's quite a a pertinent thing that you say there is because Middlesbrough and that sort of area of Teesside and what have you is not necessarily regarded for its craft beer, is it? So, I mean, almost, are you still kind of the only brewery in that immediate location doing this sort of stuff or is it now popping up that there's still a couple or there is a couple of new biz up there as well now um i think there is there the uh people are definitely i mean aaron the the events manager does a great job of, of dragging people in mm. um he does some good events so i think i think the amount of people that have been coming into the tap room we, we've done beer festivals and music festivals and things like that and so people are getting exposed to it just by mm. 
you know, being dragged to the brewery just for the events, <laughs> and then, just through through no uh, through their through their choice or not, they're being mm. forced to drink. Yeah, yeah. You will drink this beer, yeah. <laughs> uh, craft beer, which is um, and largely it's been a positive response. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are there are definitely other breweries around. I, I mean, there's there's three brothers who were, were there have been there long before us, um, mm. and I think they they've always been sort of quite traditional, but I think as as the craft beer has sort of started to grow and more and more in the UK, they, they've sort of started fo following following that trend mm. a little bit. Mm. Um, I know they've started doing some like hazy IPAs and things like that, and they're, they're lovely guys as well. Um, and I know of another one based in North Allerton, which is probably 15 miles from here, it's very small, um, called Bayonet Brewing. Um, but he again is a lovely guy. I've spoken to him a few times. Um, and he's he's doing really well. Um, I think he's still brewing out of his garage, but I think he's in the process of of getting his own premises. And because his his bees are really good, um, mm -hmm. and it's great to see. Like I, I always think, the more the more places there are, the more influence it will have um yes yeah 100 percent. You, you know it, it and sometimes i think a bit of a bit of local competition can only be a can only be a good thing really yeah for uh, sure i would know i would never see it as a negative thing and, and yeah yeah um, there may be others so i apologize if i've if i've not if you're listening and i've not mentioned you but, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's funny you mention um alex and ben though actually because it just completely slipped my mind because we've we've got him on the show in a couple of weeks time actually um, oh right i will yeah, tell him i said hello <laughs> yeah i will do definitely um but yeah we've got him on in a couple of weeks and because north you know north Island's not a million it's about an hour hour ish away from where we are yeah, actually, yeah. not a million yeah. miles yeah, away yeah. um so we're just on the outskirts of Leeds, so it's not too too far away and it was almost like it's still not 100 percent whether we can make it work but whether we can actually do an impersonal logistics of getting there and to and from and me stealing car away from Anna because we've only got one car and getting away with that and it's like pro probably not so um <laughs> despite not being too far away it probably won't work but no I've, I've seen nothing but good things for um what Alex is doing at Bayonet and there's um um Fox Brewing the lad who does the home brewing is it Adam is it Adam? No, his name. He'll probably kill me now, but he's wanting to come on the show. Oh. And he's, he's doing, yeah, he's doing... He uh, runs, I think he's called Les, is he? I, no, I can't remember now, but he, I don't um, know. he helps, he either runs or he's heavily involved with um, the homebrew club. Um, so he does do it in his garage, you know, but he's he's making beer up there and sort of helping sort of build that, um, you know, build that reputation for beer up in, up in that area because he said, you know, the same, you know, there's a couple of, you know, much better sort of pub scene now and uh and brewery scene which historically the there hasn't been like you say until you go to a bit further north go to newcastle come a bit further down go to um to york which i mean either way you're ideally situated because you're not a million miles away from either are you i suppose so if you wanted to go to one or the other then yeah yeah a well, miles away. i mean thankfully we've we've um I, i've been lucky enough to sort of get to get to know the guys at at Brew York and Full Circle, um, who are Newcastle based, I'm mm. sure we all know that. Um, and they're both, you know, lovely guys at, at both breweries, you know, and it's it is it's it's it is handy where we are because you know there to to have to have those those kind of you know genuinely you know fantastic brewers as well as nice people mm. around you is a is a great help for me. Like I, I'm still learning every day. Um and and to have those guys who were who were on, you know, running running bigger operations than we are, and and, and have done it for longer than we have, it, it, it's it's great to have that little support network, and and we've been lucky enough to do collab brews with both of them. Mm. Um, we've we've done a return and a, a home and away with Full Circle, and we've we've done a home with Brew York, and we're doing the away one in June. I want to say. Mm. Um, nice. So I'm excited to go down there and see their brand new site. They've they've just moved into a site that's you know it's oh it's mega that half that the size of Europe it. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's so, insane that kit. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. If you you'll you'll look at that and be like, oh my god, like, it's, it's literally <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, gargantuan in it. 
yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous because they've got they've got a the tap room there as well now where they do the sort of birth festival and and everything there as well. But we, um, I went to have a chat for um for a podcast with uh, that they did for Tower Beer, and I just looked at it as like Jesus Christ, you know, compared to the uh, the beer, you know, the kit they've got the beer hall, which is you know it's a decent sized kit. That do you know what I mean? It's not a yeah yeah you know oh it's, it's not nothing a, to be laughed at, is it? No, then? no, but then that is just like Jesus. It's like well, you know, it's then yeah, into, it's into dawning. proper realms of just like you know pressing buttons and just. Pulling levers and what have you, and it is crazy how they've grown to the size that they have done. So, uh, but what what's uh, what what size are you brewing on at play then, James? Where are you at now with it? Um, the we 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 do sixteen het brews, which um, I believe are about ten barrel. Um, mm-hmm. Again, for anyone that works in barrels, um, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we've all we've always done that since the start. We've just sort of grown in terms of the amount of of uh fermentation vessels we have so our sort of yeah mon- monthly output has gone up but mm. but the batch sizes have stayed the same mm. yeah, yeah i always think that's such a clever idea doing it yeah instead of because some people will just go all right they'll, they'll you know they'll start five they'll go 10 and then they'll go oh we need more let's get a 30 liter you know or a, a sorry a, a 30 bbl kit but it's like yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> yeah just, just get, mean, that- you know couple more fermenters and then yeah. you know it opens you up yeah i think i mean obviously everybody's different and and you know the way people do things if mm. whatever works for you um but we've we have sort of always found that that having uh slightly or having the amount of volume that we do with a with a sort of wider selection of beers has yeah. helped us rather than having loads of one beer um, mm. I mean, I, I think one day we will get to that point. Um, well, fingers crossed, we will. Um, but we've never had we've never had a core range. Um, so I think since I've started, um, let me have a look. I, I'd say we've done oh easily. I've probably done over a hundred different beers. Um, well, you know, different, diff, uh, like different style, like yeah. flavors and yeah, and yeah. things like that. We we've, we very very rarely do the same beer twice. I mean, saying that though, that is starting to change. Um, we the long wave that we do is that was one of the one of the early dip ones, um, which is a four point eight percent New England pale mm-hmm. um, with Citra and Idaho Seven. Um, mm-hmm. That is now sort of becoming our core beer. We we we. We're taking mainly because it just sells very well, and people seem to like it. Um, and it's 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 quite an inoffensive, inoffensive beer, really. I don't don't know many people that don't like Citra in in a hoppy in a hoppy beer. Uh, yep. And the Idaho Seven is is lovely. Um, it's it's mainly Idaho Seven in the in the hot side, Citra in the cold. The ABV is nice and nice and dark, like steady away. It's nothing mental, so. Yeah, I think we will be upping that to upping that to to two to two brews a month now. Mm. Um, we have been doing it once a month, but we've we've just started doing a cask ourselves because we never did cask for the first twelve months that I'd been there, um, and that's going really well for us. Like I think, I mean, I, I was rubbing my hands together when Craft Brewery started doing cask beer because obviously, as I've as I've sort of explained, um, and. Well, people who have drank uh, play brew beers over the years will probably th- think I'm lying when I say that uh, traditional English real ale really does hold a very strong place in my heart. Because um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, some of the some of the wild stuff that we put out would suggest the opposite, but it, it, yeah. it really yeah. is true. Um, so when we when when that cask resurgence started to happen, I, I was really pleased, and and like a lot of breweries, we are we're doing quite well with it at the minute. Um, yeah. So a lot of long wave is going into cask, um, which is great to see from my perspective. Mm. Was that something you brought in then? With Obviously with your background in that sort of more traditional cask, you know, sort of like English real ale um, roots. Did you bring that in or was it just something that, you know, you know, the guys saw and said, should we, should we, should we give this a go? Um, a little bit of both, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I think... I think Phil was looking around and seeing seeing people start to do cask beer 
and he just had a chat with me and he just because he'd never he'd obviously never done it mm. um and never had any experience with that side of of, of the of the beer world and I sort of said to him, yeah, I said, I'd, I'd absolutely love to. Um, you, all we really needed was a cask washer at, at, at yes. that point. Um, and I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. I think it's I think it's a great idea. It, it gives us another another sort of avenue for selling beer, um, which can only be a good thing as well. Um, and yeah, uh, it was it was honestly music to my ears, really, when he said that. Yeah. And, and I, I was I was. Jumping at that, jumping at that idea, yeah. Oh, brilliant, man! Yeah, like you say, when you when you look at your um, your beer lineup, like you say, you've done a, you know hundred different beers since you joined, but then when you're doing the likes of, you know, drumstick lolly, pale, and then like a, you know cinema popcorn stout, and all these other weird and wonderful <laughs> things that you yeah, yeah. you're known for, it's it is you know just bring it back to I'd say bring it back to earth. Well, I said even then, but you think about long wave, it's still. A New England pale going into cask to to some people that's still like, oh my god, why is that? What what's that doing in yeah. cask? Do you know what I mean? You know, a hazy yeah. pale ale rather than a like you say a traditional English pale ale that's a bit more coppery browny. It's bright, you can see through it. Um, you know, some people probably would still bulk at you know a beer that looks in essence you know like this, but on cask. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, yeah. to me, it, it, it adds a, another dimension to it. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing is that cask beer does give something else that a canned beer or a kegged beer or a bottled beer might might otherwise not you know if served obviously as we know the proper way um, an ample through a sparkle you know it gives it another extra <laughs> level of depth and complexity do you know what i mean and you know i, I, I do like trying these different styles but like you say the the sort of the, the the bigger breweries that are making cask beer cool again you know, if you look at the likes mm. of your Verdant, you know, the monks, you know, Verdant, especially going back and doing some more more traditional um, styles, but certainly to have this sort of stuff on cask and just, you're, you're great. Do you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah, I'd be I'd be not? dying to try some of their traditional stuff because the, tr- the trouble is I don't know anywhere around here that would have their, their stuff on cask, which is a bit of a mm. shame, but but my I've, I've got my half of my family's in Cornwall, so I'll, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to go and try it down there next time I'm down. Mm. Yeah, well, it's I'm, an excuse, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I have to, if I absolutely have to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're back down, um, end of this month, start of next month. So I'll, um, I can't remember what it is. They had something on at the tap room last time I was down, and I can't remember what it was, but I was saying that they're doing a big push on the pen pole, I think it is, that they've just done now, which I think they're, yes, more traditional style pale. I know they've done a bitter, I think they've done golden ale. I saw the tip, I can't remember if I saw it or they told me, but they did a batch and they tipped it away because it wasn't good enough. And it's it's a weird one, isn't it? Because a lot of people look at Verd and, and be like, just you know, stick to what you know. You know, just just do what mm. you're good at. But it's like, well, by the same token, especially as the industry's changing and evolving again and people are wanting the big, heavy, oppy, hazy, fruity stuff. Well, some people might be wanting, you know, the English stuff's coming back and we've had a couple of people say it in the shop that they're going back to, bitters and you know english pale ales and brown ales and ruby ales and golden ales it's kind of almost going full circle again is that we've mm-hmm. enjoyed these hoppy easy beers for a few years now and then it's like well oh, they're quite nice as well though aren't they shall we shall we have these yeah. for a while and it's like again it's yeah, that yeah. but it's that grounding isn't it it's almost that sort of progression that most people go through that well you start on these and then you get you know you progress and you know you get upgraded onto other bits and pieces and it is nice to go back to these other you know for for a few years forgotten styles by a lot of people that you know have been shunned in the corners now it's not it's not bright yellow now i don't want it and then now it's like oh yes yeah, it's, it's quite nice actually isn't it yeah yeah, yeah definitely well I, I think like the thing the thing with with craft beer whether whether it's a, a super high you know grams per liter pale or whether it's uh you know, a ridiculously strong, overly sweet stout, which we are known for. Not not so much <laughs> strong, but definitely sweet. Sweet, um, yeah. <laughs> and, or, or, a, or a fruity sour or something like that. Um, there they, they can be, in, in the best way, a bit of an assault on your senses, really. Mm. Whereas I feel like the, the, the sort of more traditional English stuff is, is a much more sort of... Uh, I don't want to say balance because that's the wrong word, really. Uh, 
Uh, mm. just, they're just they're just a bit more sort of easygoing, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think yeah, uh, yeah. There's not really a uh, uh, yeah. I think easy going is good, palatable maybe, but that makes it, but that makes the other stuff sound like it's not. Yeah, exactly. That, that's that's why is, balanced is like, the wrong word. As yeah, well. it's not yeah. it's not the right way to describe it, is it? But yeah, I, no. I get what you mean. It's a it's a smoother ride, isn't it? Into it, where yes, that's a good know, way of putting it. I, I think it's like Steve, you know, you said before, like you know, like when we've tried certain beers, where you've said is if you're introducing someone who, you know, has only ever drunk traditional you know real ale cask beer you wouldn't necessarily chuck them a verdant or something and say oh this is craft beer because yeah. it's going to just go they're going to be like ah you know they're not they're not going to know quite know what to do with it and you know the, you know immediately you know cat's bottom uh face and they're just not gonna they're not never gonna touch a uh, a craft beer again sort of thing so yeah, yeah it's yeah. a nice way to break people into that sort of sort of an in-between where i think where a lot of people are sort of going now it's it is cask beer but it's cask beer with a bit more like zip absolutely it's not, yeah it's yeah it's not like the proper proper sort of like original recipes it is them original recipes but with just that sort of new maybe that new world or that craft world kick and a bit of zap in there yeah for sure definitely yeah like you say it's not we, we say this all the time don't we about what what different beers it, it'd be i suppose that'd be a good a good sort of podcast to do that like you say about introductory beers now because it's it'd be interesting to see like how because obviously flavors change don't they like we said it's uh, mm. good to go back and and retread that a little bit but yeah it'd be it'd be great to to try some of your your stuff on cask for sure james at some point Ooh, so yeah yes. if we do see that doing the rounds anywhere local to to where we are because i know phil used to uh, he used to work in leeds didn't he so i know he's got quite a um got quite an affinity for this sort of neck of the woods hasn't he so you do, you do see it quite scattered around around here yeah you do yeah yeah mm. yeah so we'll have to have to keep an eye out for it somewhere so james we've touched on the beers um we'll talk more specifically about the beers so i picked up a beer from the shop before i uh, before i left so i've got your uh, classics um, Hazy Pale Ale, which um, I think is a sort of a recent addition to your lineup. I think I'm right in saying this sort of more pub, Peter, you know, play Bruco classic series. So, what's the um, what's the thought behind it? Because I was looking at them earlier, and we've got the Hazy Pale, and I think a tropical pale or a tropical IPA there. And I was like, you know, for a, a classics, you know, again, looking back to that, what we were just saying about classic, you know, sort of English IPA pales, maybe not sort of classics in that extent, but are these classics in terms of your classics that you really like? Is that what the, the idea is? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think that the, the we were just sort of experimenting with, with label templates as much as okay. anything. They're just... Again, they're pretty unique beers. There was no, like, in from not sorry, not in the grand scheme of things, but that you know, they're not beers that we've done more than once. As, mm. Um, they're not, they're not beers that w- that we had any big, major plans for. To be honest, mm. um, yeah. it, it, I think it li- literally was um, uh, a sort of a marketing exercise as much as anything else. Mm. Um, one of our one of our plans for this year, um, I mean, I don't think it'll happen this year, but we want to really start getting the ball rolling for it. Is is to start selling our cans in supermarkets, um, and we are quite aware that a, a lot of particularly craft breweries, um, you, well, it's very easy for you to run into trouble with with bright, colourful labels like we have. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, the the argument is, is that, that they're aimed at. They're, they're aimed at children, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah they're, they're, I can imagine they're, they're, mums. They're nest visually attractive. Them. Sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, Aaron, go on. No, no, no. I was just saying. I, I bet that mums net would have a field day with. Yeah, yeah. With them, wouldn't they? You know, so they shouldn't be down that aisle anyway. What they're doing? Yeah, exactly. That's that was my <laughs> argument. <laughs> go down uh, the sweet he, aisle. <laughs> even if they got to the till, I don't know what a five-year-old would do with a can of craft beer <laughs> at the till. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's it seems a bit bizarre, but I uh, yeah, it's I don't know. I I'd, I think they use the argument that it's brainwashing, I guess. But hey ho, that's for 
that's for people that uh, other people for just to decide and argue between themselves. Uh, I try yeah, not well, to yeah. Involve, involve myself too much in that, but but the the hazy pale that you are um, drinking specifically, I believe, is uh, largely mosaic. Um, in the in, mosaic lead on the can, so yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think there you go. I think it, I think it was entirely mosaic in in the dry and a bit of uh, chinook in the whirlpool with some mm -hmm. mosaic as well. Um, it was just meant to be a pretty standard inoffensive beer. That there's honestly not too much to say about it, really. Mm. That, that of, of any real interest, I'll, I'll be totally honest. Um, <laughs> well, it, not not in, not not because it's you know it's not a boring beer. It is a, a very you know it's a very easy going you know it, it's a hazy pale ale. You know it, it's, yeah, it's a hazy yeah. pale ale. It's a hazy. It pale does ale. what it says on the tin. Yeah, exactly. And to <laughs> ring theme on this podcast of Ron Seal beers, and it did. You know, when I looked at the label, I was like, "Is that sort of maybe the stuff that they're going for? Maybe if they do cask beer, and it's like, well, you know, I could I could see that quite." easily and comfortably in cask you know just as a as a hazy pale you know the what is it 4.5 percent you know it's relatively you know inoffensive in abv flavor wise it's spot on you know you've got that mosaic flavor and you know a bit of savory to it and a bit of earthiness to it and you know i could quite easily see that being on cask but yeah as a you know if somebody like you know it's one of them things if you like this you will like this you know and if somebody likes a faith by northern monk you will like this if you like transmission yeah. from north you will like this you know and it's almost i, yeah. I suppose you, in many respects for from your perspective especially at the tap room if somebody comes in and says well i like you know we get it a lot of shop well i like i've drank brew dog i like punk or i like dead pony club or I like whatever and it's like well well if you like that you like this and if they come to the tap room and mm -hmm. say well i like faith by northern monk fine well you'll like this then and it's kind mm -hmm. of makes yeah your job easier but give you know it's easy but it gives them something that they're going to enjoy yeah yeah well you, you've kind of hit the nail on the head there um because we because we do have a tap room that, that can can get quite busy at times um and it's it's we we have to we have to make sure that, that what we've got on the tap room is is suitable for for people uh for for, for you know for people who don't want the crazy stuff, you know, mm. the, the the sweet flavored beers and the and the sours and things, you know, not not everybody wants that. Um, no. And again, for for people who are probably still on that transition into the craft beer mm -hmm. world, I feel like that beer is probably a sort of stepping stone for that person. You know, it's not it, it's it's not a wildly hop dipper, but it's also mm. not. John Smith's. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 somewhere in the middle that that mm. where people can go. Oh, hang on, that's like, you know, you can you can really taste the mosaic, like you say, and and it, and it's got a, but it's not too strong. It's it's yeah. Um, yeah. So the tap room, like like you've said, the tap room does does influence some of the beers that we brew, particularly of that sort of style, because you know we you can't you can't really have a bar full of full of cotton candy flavored sours i mean i mean some I people know. some people might yeah. say you can uh and I don't, i'm not judging those people but <laughs> yeah. do, do, do like a good sour so you know i, I wouldn't say no to that you know I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> completely uh, against the idea but no it's, it is it's... one of them things though where how you said that you need to sort of it, it's hard isn't it you're never going to make everybody happy it's it's impossible. It is um, impossible. You're right. It's just trying to find that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> trying to find that balance of having something for everyone is yeah. incredibly hard. Yeah. Um, and I think I actually really like the fact that, you, you, you know, you're doing stuff that, again, is, I think you said yourself, just like nothing ridiculously interesting to say about the beer, but that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, so I think... I went down a bit of a route of just trying the weirdest things I could find because <laughs> it were different and it, you know, it were cool. And, you know, you're trying to get, you, you know, I think we've said it before on that going back to another sort of podcast um, normality is that we always going about untapped being like Pokemon, you know, got to catch them all. You've got to have the weirdest one. You've got to be the first, you know, to get the shiny card or, you know, the Charizard that everybody needs, <laughs> you know? So I think going as I'm, you know, maybe getting a little bit, 
I don't know, calming down now. I'm easing a bit, you know, you, you <laughs> in my old age. Old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just respect a beer that I can sit there and enjoy and, you know, pick out flavours, you know, be it Mosaic, Citra, Idaho 7, Willamette, you know, whatever. But being able to pick that out and say, I can get that. It's really nice. I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Nice. You know, I don't. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there definitely is a place for beers like that, and as you can see, as you say as well, it doesn't alienate the people who don't want, you know, a ten percent, you know, impy stout or something. You know, yeah. just, just something nice, easy, that goes down well, that you can have a few of. You know, yeah. I love beers like that. Yeah, well, I, I do as well. Again, that's probably, um, a, a lot of, sort of where I've, uh got my in influence from and, and learn mm. the trade like uh yeah I, I feel exactly the same way uh, i do love trying new beers i love seeing what other breweries are up to when they when they when they're going a bit crazy and stuff but mm. you know it, it, in the same time you know you've you've got to have a safety net to fall back on haven't you yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and and a, and a nice down the middle beer like like what that hazy pale is is meant to be mm. It is yeah, is what we were going for really, definitely. I think as well you can get caught in the trap. I certainly did. Where when so when we had a um, we had Pig Love uh, Brewing, they they came to Cuckoo Brew uh, down on our kit, and we were very still are, but we were, we were very very tradi- traditional then. It was cask beer, good old English, you know, pint, uh, proper ample sort of beer, and they came in, and the first beer they did had this tree bark from the Amazonian rainforest with uh, salted, dried grasshoppers. <laughs> and it was like, what is going on? And I mean, that's two polar opposites, I know, but I got like this inferior, the inferiority complex where I'm like, we're not pushing our beers far enough. You know, we were just starting to go into keg at that point. So we were like, just experiment with it, like double dry hopping and stuff. <laughs> and these yeah, come yeah. along with these, you know, <laughs> weird you know, Amazonic plants and dried insects. And I'm like, hang on a minute, is this what I should Simon. be doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, honest to God, that, the, the proper grasshoppers. Like, I was like, oh God, this is going to take forever to clean. That's the only, <laughs> the only thing I was annoyed at is like, oh, I've got to get rid of grass. Not only do I have to get rid of hops, I've got to make sure that these grasshoppers are gone. <laughs> 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 so, oh, so, God. Honestly, it would that yeah, it were. I look back and now at laugh, but I were cursing them when they brought them in. I was like, "You're cleaning that." <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I'm that. nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Is... You'll have to consort this out. No, I'm not doing that. Oh, honestly, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, two polar opposites there, man. Absolutely crazy, and they're very safe in one room together. Yeah, it went well. <laughs> I, I I don't think I've ever heard anything that that wild go, going going oh. into. Yeah, it were mad, that absolutely is, crazy. So that is they've bizarre. calmed down a bit now, but when the first say, came out, I don't out, think they were... they've done anything as crazy as that since, have they? No, that were definitely the worst. That that not the worst one. It was actually a very very nice beer. It would have gone. It was to be it fair. Used... It were nice that goes actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd done it and they'd they'd, they'd used the salted grasshoppers as like the the salt and stuff in it, and it was really really. It was a really good beer, but it were an absolute. Yeah, it was just a terror to try and clean after that. But well, they did the uh... worst. They do eat insects in a lot of other countries, don't they? So, yeah, mainly, yeah. mainly, mainly a lot further east of here, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 sort of not surprising that 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 that, yeah. that is a thing. But also, I wasn't <laughs> expecting you to say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, how do you think I felt when I was sat there and thought about? I was like, <laughs> quick, kill it. <laughs> yeah, this thing that happened. I think, yeah. I think oh, the one thing that you could God. have said about it though is that. It, in this world, like you say about like Aaron about being, you know, Pokemon and catch them all and try everything, and it, I think mm. you were one of the few breweries at the time that were just coming out that actually were doing something discernibly different. You know, it's like yeah, well, like, you know, obviously the, the, the animal cruelty aspect to one side for people who are you know vegan, yeah, yeah. And, you know, apart from that, but you know, to actually have grasshoppers in beer, but obviously from there heritage and their roots you know the the lads are <laughs> venezuela uh, you know venezuelan and it's like well they're actually doing something that's from their own country that they're used yeah. to it. this is just part of their everyday lives over there yeah yeah it's a bit alien and a bit bizarre but it's like well 
I've never seen this before. You know, and like you say, they put the wood in there. They did the um, they did the smoked colch that to me just tasted like smoked meat and smoked cheese. Oh um, God, you should have been there when they brewed that as yeah, well. That, that was fun. Um, you know, just <laughs> stuff that were genuinely different, and it's like this is just bonkers. You know, it's just absolutely yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a bit. Yeah, it would. I, I learned a lot from them because obviously they were so different. That it, you know, a bit. I, I imagine it's a bit like when you, you, James went to, you know, but went to play, and they were doing everything a bit differently. You sort of just, if you just sit back and try and absorb what they're doing, a little it, bit. It, yeah, it was very much a culture shock for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 as I'm yeah, sure, yeah. Put, as I'm sure, putting insects in beer was for you mm. as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it. Yeah, I don't do it anymore. I don't do it now. I'm not like harvesting <laughs> spiders and daddy long legs to put in my next stout, but. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> empty fly trap out and flies up of here. We'll just stick them in. Yeah, they'll do. Yeah, yeah, right. They'll do. Nice bit of body. Nice bit of, uh, <laughs> bit of extra protein in there. Um, but yeah, but obviously, like you say, you you don't go quite as wild as putting um, grasshoppers in beer, James, at play. But you you do like we said. You've got you know like to a drumstick lolly. I think you've done a curly whirly stout. You've done the pop. You know, some of a popcorn stout and other bits and pieces. So, I suppose that. That does beg the question, really, of where, where do the ideas come from, and and what what's the perception of of them overall, genuinely like? Um, it, it the the ideas largely, I'd, I'd sort of say ninety ninety five to ninety uh, like percent of them come from Phil, really. Okay. Um, you know, it's the 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 I like the wild and crazy stuff is sort of his baby. Um, yeah, I uh, and so he he sort of comes to me with ideas. Um, at this when I first started, because this was obviously very new to me, uh, do, doing some of the flavors that we've done, he he was quite heavily involved in 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 the recipe development and things like that as well. Mm-hmm. But um, mainly mainly sort of the post firm stuff, um, like post fermentation stuff, but. Now he pretty much just comes to me with ideas. I'll sort of we have a loose chat about or bounce a few emails back and forth, depending on where he is about how we want to emulate these flavors, um, how we think it will, like how certain things will reflect in the in beers. Um, color is always a big thing for us. Um, I'm. Sh- I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, last year, or actually, it might have even been the year before. Yeah, it was the year before. Um, we did a blue raspberry slush beer, mm. um, which mm-hmm. we tried so hard to get blue. It was. Yeah. It was. It was really. It took some doing that, and we finally got it, and we were so so pleased with ourselves. But by the time it came to to package it a lot of the color had sort of fallen out and it just yeah. it sort of gone a bit green and, and we felt yeah. a bit and we were just like uh oh. i mean it didn't look awful but it just wasn't mm. it just wasn't what we wanted, wanted you know yeah. And, yeah yeah but um cleaning out that tank was an experience honestly uh, <laughs> oh, it was just imagine. bright it was like someone had got a tin of blue paint and just thrown it around Thrown it around inside a God, tank. Oh yeah, because there was still like, uh, was it was it like still ye- little bit yeast bits in that had like gone yeah, bright yeah, blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The year, uh, um, I took a picture of it. Uh, it's a shame I can't show you, but it, it's it was just yeah, it was like blue paint was coming out of the bottom. <laughs> yeah, of the, I can imagine. I can see it. <laughs> it. It was inc- it was it was it was quite mind blowing, really. But it was a shame that it didn't hold hold in the beer. Um, and that was that was a beer that I think. Uh, I think it got us a lot of attention. Some, some mm. positive and some very negative. <laughs> yeah. attention. Inevitably, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was very much a love it or hate it beer that one, and I, I'd say I don't think we've done anything that crazy since. But we we do like to try and, uh, like I say, Phil Phil does have a lot like come up with these ideas, and then which we we, we'll, you know find the best way to emulate those flavors um you know and and as a commercial brewery you've got to be wary of cost of things as well um that's always something that plays a part there's there's, mm-hmm. there's not much point in making a beer that's you know going to be unaffordable to most people um some breweries can get away with it 
um, if they're sort of known for it. Um, but we we probably aren't known for that sort of thing. So we do have to be uh, wary of cost at times. Um, we sours as well. I think our sour beers have have come a long way. Um, we like to do sort of beers that are emulated with things like well they're mainly uh, we like to be inspired by things that already exist a lot of the time yeah so the sour that we did a couple of years ago that i thought was phenomenal was a was a mango an orange sour that was meant to be like a orange popsicle stick um and that was gorgeous um that was one of the ones we really hit the nail on the head with that it was lovely and you know the citrusy acidity from the orange really, really like emphasised the sourness. But the mango gave it like a sort of mango is very sweet. Um, yeah. When you put it in a sour beer, it sort of it sort of takes away that that feeling of of having the enamel stripped off your teeth. Yeah. But it but it but it but it doesn't make it too sweet, and it's sort of that perfect consistency to just thicken it up a bit as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would, I would, I would love to do that beer again, and I and I think we will at some point. Um, and the, but the, uh, I would say, yeah, it, the, the the sort of sweet fruitiness inspired stuff isn't just sours; it translates to the stouts um, as well. Uh, I know you mentioned this, the cinema uh, popcorn stout. Um, yeah. That was a bit of an experiment because it was the first time we'd used uh, Tonka. I'd never used t- Tonka beans before, okay. mm-hmm. um, so that that was a bit of a new one. The what 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 disappointed me about that beer, personally, I mean, I'm going to just be honest, um, is is the, the the popcorn. We we used a popcorn flavoring. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think if you put popcorn in, it would actually. No, it add a flavor to the beer. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So we used a popcorn flavoring for that with the tonka, with some vanilla extract, and I think there was a uh, cocoa powder in that beer as well to just give it a bit of chocolatiness. And the, the just the popcorn didn't cut through at all, mm. which was yeah. a real shame because it said popcorn on the label. Um, so you know it. Like I said to you, I learn something new every day. Um, and when you do get it wrong, I feel like that's when you learn a lot more mm-hmm. than when you get it right. Um, oh, yeah, massively. It's always nice to get it right, obviously. But uh, when yeah. you do get it wrong, I feel like that's when you when you really learn and, and things. And So, yeah, the blue, the blue slush beer, the <laughs> cinema popcorn stout beer. Um, uh, Although, in my opinion, they probably weren't as strong as the orange popsicle mango beer. Mm. I definitely learned a lot more from those other two. Mm. I think it uh, makes it all the more sweeter as well when you actually get it right after that. Yeah, So, you know, you, you attempt one, attempt two, meh, and then, you know, attempt three, four, five, whatever it is. When you finally crack it, it's like, bang, done. That's awesome. Yeah, and then you enjoy um, it so much more because you've you know you've gone through the. I'm not going to say pain because it's still good beer, but it's it's not exactly what you want. And I think as well, I'm guilty of it all the time where I, I build up a picture or I build up a taste, if you like, in my ma- it, it, you know in my mind, going, oh, that's what it's going to be like. I can't wait to yeah, try that. Yeah. And then it's not exactly how I pictured it, so therefore yeah. it's rubbish. <laughs> where it isn't. Yeah, yeah, it's just... That's very much how I get sometimes, and then I, and then yeah. people try them and they go, "That's delicious," and I go, "Is it?" <laughs> I'm glad you. Yeah, think you're so. thinking. No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've just been polite now. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean uh, that is something that I do get asked a lot. Actually, it's funny you should say about the sort of nailing the beers on the third or fourth attempt. I one of the things that people ask me the most, and I think it is because of what we what we do at play is, mm. like I say, we very very rarely make the same beer twice. So one of the things I get asked the most is. Do you have a pilot kit? Um, yeah, yeah. And the answer is no, we don't. We literally wow, that's brave. <laughs> yeah, we throw our feet in the deep end every single time, and that is why um, occasionally we don't 
we don't always hit the nail on the head. Um, mm. Thankfully, we've never really done any beers that I would say are objectively bad. Um, mm-hmm. There was there was one beer that uh, we did get wrong um, through no real fault of our own. We we run on electrical elements in our kettle. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The element the element blew up mid boil. No. Oh God, yeah, that's no. I, did, yeah. I didn't realize this until post firm. Thankfully, before I dry hopped the beer, but I I tasted it and it tasted like an ashtray. So yeah, that one had to go. But that was that was no sort of that wasn't anything that to do with the recipe or anything like that. We I think we are generally pretty. I think because we do it so much, it is something we yeah. are good at. Um, I would say that is definitely one of our strong points. Is that we're good at knowing how things are going to turn out before we've done it. Just because Phil and I are both now quite experienced in that area of brewing, um, yeah. it's something that we do a lot um, on a on a bit on a big scale. Um, so, yeah, it's. But then you do end up with the whole thing. Like sometimes they're not exactly what they say on the tin, which yeah. people on on tap love to moan about, but. Yeah. Um, well, this is it. Yeah. If it's, if it's, yeah, if it's, I try not to take it personally. <laughs> no, if, it, if it's on if it's on the label, people are. It, it's like you can't win either way because people are like, well, it's on the tin, so it, you know it's on the tin. It's got to be there. It, you know, if you're saying it tastes like yeah. you say, it, if yeah. it tastes like popcorn, it, you've got to have a, a, a flavor of popcorn. If it says peanut yeah. on it, it's got to be a peanut. If it's a banana, it's got to be a banana or, or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. But then you'll always get even even if the flavor's there and you're you're happy with it, as in the brewer who, who's made it. You'll always get that. But, well, it's not. It's not popcorny enough. Oh, it's too yeah, popcorny. Yeah. And then you'll get the one. Who, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's pop, it's popcorn. What do you want? And you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, 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 there's always going to be someone in between. It's it, it's too banana. It's not banana enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. Like, it tastes like fake banana. Oh, it doesn't taste like yeah, real yeah. peanuts. And it's like, well, yeah, but you can't chuck <laughs> real banana or real peanuts in beer. <laughs> yeah. You can't just bung. You can't just bung these things in a, a vessel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At best, it just don't work. You know, yeah, no, you're right. You simply can't do it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, like you say, it's just God, God love untapped. You'll always get those people that are like, nah, 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 nah. It's just like, yeah, but again, it's just their opinion at the end of the day. But it's almost like, well, yeah, but my my opinion is better than everybody else's. Like, listen yeah. to me, listen to yeah. me, listen to me. Um, yeah, you do get that. Yeah, of course. I, I, I did a um, I did I did a tap takeover in. Um, or like a beer tasting event, a tap takeover, um, Oscars in Morley. Okay. You guys might yeah, know oh, yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, not too long ago. And there was only eight people there, but it was, so it was quite intimate, but it was really nice. And uh, mm. everyone seemed to really like all of the beers and stuff. And I thought <laughs> afterwards I was thinking, I need to read some on tap now just to keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. about, bit of balance. Yeah. I was like, I've had too many people tell me the beers are nice now. I need to, yeah, I need to keep my head, clear. keep my head on my shoulders here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I know what Dip I'll do. I'll read some on tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. them, them same, them same people that have been nice in person on tap have been like, nah, this is, no, <laughs> this is crap. No, is thankfully, yeah, most yeah. of them were. Yeah. Uh, the, the ones that did uh, leave reviews, I think, were pretty nice. Thankfully. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's a minefield as we always know, but it should which uh, another minefield which I suppose um, we can come on to as part of this um, sort of question or, or topic, James. Obviously, is the um, you know we we try and negotiate these tough times that we're in. I'm sure that you guys are probably feeling the squeeze just as much as um, everybody else, but in particular, if you are using these sort of crazy ingredients and and other bits and pieces, obviously the price of them's probably gone up. And like you say, you don't want to. Make beer that's too unaffordable, but then by the same token, that's not going to make you, you know, a, a, a decent sort of margin on it. But you guys use um, lactose in in a fair few of your yes, stout, we do. Towers, and indeed your your pale beers, which I noticed when I was looking at the the two that I uh, chose between um, earlier on. So I know a lot yeah. of people are oh no, like don't put lactose in beer and da da da, and, and to a certain extent, I understand it. Um, if used in, you know, used in the correct way, fine. But a lot of people can just stick it in just to mask problems. There's probably people do with hops, you know, just well, it's not quite mm. right. Stick more hops in it. Just stick some, you know, try and sort of cover the cover the tracks a little bit. Um, but what what's the 
what's the the rationale behind using lactose in in beers? Probably more so the pails than the stouts, which obviously for the for the sweetness, but for the pails especially, um, what's the what's the rationale there? Um, the I, I would say honestly, it's 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 a it's a it is a sweetness in a body thing, mm -hmm. um, and and that's that's honestly where it ends for the for those styles of beers really. Um, okay. There's not much more to it um, in terms of the meaning or mm. as to why we why we put lactose in. Mm -hmm. um, one of the recent ones we've done was, uh, well, funnily enough, I think that I've just rebrewed Hang 10, which is one of the like really old beers sort of from before I started. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that originally was meant to be a flavoured milkshake beer. Right, okay. Um, but, but I don't think the flavourings arrived on time. So, so right. we'd already brewed it, put lactose in it, and then gone, oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> Where, uh, where's the flavourings? Like, so oh, we thought, well, we've got, a few bags of, uh, <laughs> we've got a few bags of citra and mosaic lying around. Let's just throw them Lang in. Them in. <laughs> yeah, and uh, funnily enough, it, it went down really well. Um, I, I, again, like I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of lactose in pails. Mm. Um, it, 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 it wouldn't ever be something that I would choose to do my, myself really. Um, but people like it. And, and because I think that it, it's almost sort of because of who we are, it, it, people sort of have come to expect it. You know, they're not shocked if we, yeah. if we release a beer with lactose in it, you know? Yeah. Um, and people do seem to like it. Uh, the, the, the tropical pale that I, seem to remember you mentioning mm -hmm. at some point today was um that was heavily inspired by um uh, club tropica by tiny rebel okay oh, yeah, um, yeah. we we didn't we didn't want it to have the same flavor profile as such but but that sort of style of beer where it's i mean i know they don't put lactose in theirs but mm. um there it's i just find it super thick um and and really fruity um so i just thought well how can i you know emulate that that thickness um and i sort of went over a few ways that they may have done it in the head and i thought well i don't want to just copy what they've done exactly and, and i thought i'll put a bit of a play brew twist on it mm -hmm. so i yeah, thought well i'll exactly. use lactose um and and it turned out pretty good i was pretty pleased with it again it's not that that sort of beer is not really something i'd choose to drink myself but but i was pleased with with how that beer turned out yeah mm. yeah for sure mm. um but the, but the lactose in the stouts the, the, that's just um again for sweetness and body a lot of our stouts are very sweet they're known we've got a reputation for doing sweet stouts and the, the lactose really thickens them up um and helps emphasize that sweetness um and in the for, for the for the sours, um, I I do sometimes find fruited sours um, can be a little bit thin if you're not careful. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I've sort of messed around with water recipes a lot, um, tried different ways of souring the beers. Um, tried different you know uh malts to, to try and get get make get them thicker every time and uh, i've sort of not had too much joy but i think i think the lactose does just it adds something to a sour beer for me um mm -hmm. i'm still quite new to sours i've only really been drinking them since i started at play and um i, I do think to my personal taste I had a I had a sour from I can't remember what it was called, but I had a sour from North Brew that had a lot of dark berries in it with yeah, yeah. Uh, salt and lactose. And I'd never tried a a beer uh, like a sour beer with lactose in it at, at this point, and it was the best sour I'd ever had. And I thought that is that's phenomenal. Um, <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm going to start putting lactose in our sours and. I'm, I've been really pleased with the results. I just, I'd say that the reason for that is very much a, a personal taste thing for me. Mm. Um, I kind of like with the sours. I, I probably kind of understand it a little bit more with the, you know, that sweet and sour combo. And I didn't like say if you get 
all out fruit. So, you know, some sours can feel a little bit thin, but then if you go to the ridiculous end of the spectrum, like I had a, a, a Vault City over the other weekend, the Aaron, the, uh, the coconut banana and one, you get it, yeah, it's just yeah, literally yeah. It's like <laughs> pouring out a, a, a smoothie, do you know what I mean? So you can go from one ex- <laughs> Come out extreme one, to the it? other, but yeah. It like just, dog food. Yeah, just... yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know the guys at Vault City to be honest, but they, I think that you know from people who I've spoken to and stuff, I think they put, they just put ludicrous amounts of fruit in their beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But it, I mean, but it, 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 it works for them, doesn't it? You know, mm. they, they always seem to get it right, and 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 they do make lovely beers. So, and the, like for us, especially the sell so well. You know, I mean, that was. I think about seven pounds something. I think for the can, you know, which for you know for a can is you know it's it's, it's a, a fair whack is that you know it's a decent it's a, lot it's of a money, decent yeah, price yeah. you know. But I get that the amount, like you said, James, the amount of fruit that they probably put in there, you know, fruit especially at the minute is is, is not cheap, you know. So I I you know the cost does has to be, you know, have to be passed on at at some at some point. Um, but yeah, they, you know, it's very very rare that I feel like they've missed. Uh, missed the mark in there, but but that had lactose in it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you know, even there, you know, sticking lactose. And again, for the sours, I kind of, I kind of get it. Um, I suppose if you're going by the purist definition, it, it just depends on what sort of sour beer you're making, doesn't it? Because if you make, <laughs> you know, if you're wanting to try and make a purist sour, then no. But I'm guessing you guys are probably maybe doing it the same way as most people. It's more of trying to make a sort of a Berliner Weiss base and then fruiting afterwards. Is that? the way that you guys tend to do it as well or yeah pretty well pretty much we we do we do sour through firm Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. i have experimented with kettle souring before Mm -hmm. um and i wasn't i was i actually quite liked how it it was it was a uh, what was it it was a blueberry it was a blueberry blueberry and lemon beer Mm -hmm. um and i was really pleased with how it turned out actually but the, the the main problem for us was that kettle sours just they, they tie up the kettle for three days. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 mainly a, 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 a sort of a logistical production issue. Um, whereas souring through firm, you know, it, it's 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 no different to any other beer. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, in in terms of in terms of the, you know, it only it's only tying up one FV, which is what any other beer would be doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's so, an additional resource. Yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, we don't we don't pasteurize our beers. We don't put any any anything t- too unnatural in them. Uh, <laughs> some people <laughs> might. But so we we can't we 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 have to put the fruit in through fermentation. Um, yeah. A- any anything that gets added to our beers with any kind of sugars in, whether they're sort of fermentable sugars or not. I will put in through the firm just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, you uh, you hear horror stories of breweries, uh, you know, releasing beers and all the cans all exploding and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the time, I sympathise with them because it's not, you know, it, it can be a bit tricky sometimes. But yeah, that's something I am conscious of. Touch wood, we've never had that issue. Um, and. I, I am. It is something. I think it is because it's something I am hyper aware of all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the fruit always goes through firm, which again is probably why I think sometimes they can turn out a bit thin because all of the sugars and a lot of yeah. the body from the fruit just gets eaten by the yeast. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know you, you've got to sort of compensate for that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. But, but you know, you've, you've got to try and make it as shelf stable and as secure as possible. It's like you say, the last thing you want to do is end up having, you know, even, even if you serve it in keg, yeah. you know, even, you know, even can to one side, if you serve it in keg, you don't want it to be a nightmare to pour because obviously, if it's still going, you know, oh, it's still, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it could just be a funny yeah. nightmare if you send it to a pub or or what have you, and it could just end up being an absolute. Absolutely, and 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 quality nightmare. control is is just as important as as. as quality of the product really yeah of course it is um, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a sense definitely yeah of course especially where if you're saying you're going into cask as well the last thing you want to do is a big secondary fermentation going off in there absolutely it's, yeah, yeah. it'll sound like you're under siege yeah. there'll be yeah. shives and keystones everywhere mate honestly yeah. <laughs> yeah you'll have a you'll have a very messy cellar somewhere and a very angry <laughs> landlord won't you? yes <laughs> for sure yeah 
So I think, James, that brings us towards the, the end of the show. So thank you very, very much for joining us. We appreciate it and taking time out of your evening to, to have a chat. But um, you've mentioned the, the tap room quite a few times. Um, so people that are listening, if they are in the uh, in the Middlesbrough area, what, what what's the tap room opening times? And have you got any events coming up for the tap room? Um, the tap room is open Thursday evening, Friday evening, and Saturday daytime. Mm-hmm. Um, and the and we are open as well the last Sunday of every month. Okay. Um, so we 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 do we do sort of daytime dog socials on the last Sunday of every month, which is exactly yeah. what it sounds. They're yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, they are absolutely <laughs> yeah. amazing. Anyone that loves dogs will will love it. Um. Yeah. Uh, we usually get because it is a Sunday daytime as well. I think we, the last few times at least, we've had like uh, people come, like a coffee stall come down, so people you know mm-hmm. they don't have to drink a ten percent uh, strawberry sour at eleven yeah. o'clock on a Sunday. Uh, <laughs> what's wrong? I don't, with know, I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with some people, but they don't, they don't all want to do that for some reason. Yeah, um, yeah so. Yeah, we normally get like uh, a, a, a couple of food stalls or, or and a coffee stall down as well, so that's good. Um, Thursday night is is quiz night. Um, Aaron always does different quizzes. They're usually uh, one subject specific, so based on mm-hmm. like a TV series or a, a specific decade mm-hmm. like for that. music yeah. or something like that, you know. And they're they're always good fun. Um, and the prizes are stupid. Um, <laughs> you can, I, th- I think one of them was a cardboard cutout of uh, Danny DeVito. Um, uh, ah, brilliant. Which, I mean, I hope it had some significance and relevance to the overall quiz. I think it was, it's, a, it's an always sunny in Philadelphia quiz. Oh, so. there you go then. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, who, yeah, who doesn't uh, want that? Who doesn't I want know, who doesn't a want a cardboard cutout of Danny, of Danny DeVito, DeVito in their yeah, front? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just you can have a chat with him while you drink your morning coffee, you know. Is that a bit of company? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. I, I was gutted. I didn't win that quiz. I just yeah, I you, could, you you couldn't didn't watch though. the show enough. <laughs> you couldn't win it though, mate. You, you oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone yeah. Would think it was too rigged. much controversy. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then we Fridays occasionally. They're generally just a day where we're just open. Um, mm-hmm. We do occasionally have things on like bands or DJs and stuff like that, um, which are sometimes on a Friday. Um, Saturday is usually a day where bigger events will take place. So sometimes we have nights where there is like three or four bands on on a Saturday. Um, we've got uh, a Fleetwood Mac tribute band playing there very soon, which nice. I believe awesome. is actually sold out. So there's not much point me plugging it, but um yeah, that's still it, awesome man. But yeah, it's, it's, it was it, i think it is we are very much looking forward to that um we've we do what else do we do there's a uh, karaoke nights um things like that uh we've just got a um permanent food vendor on site as well now called lucky ted's nice. um and they do 24 inch new york style pizzas um now i don't know if anyone's seen a 24 inch pizza before, yeah. but they are, I haven't, but you've got my attention. Enormous. Yeah, they are just enormous. Um, how far away is uh, Middlesbrough, Aaron? Um, uh, <laughs> all right, we can be there in an hour if uh, you put your foot uh, down. <laughs> Stick it in uh, they, they, they are delicious. Um, but you, you, the idea is that you buy it by the slice unless you're foolish, nah. um, nah. or very, very hungry. I don't know. I'd give that, um, a, I'd give that a good go. <laughs> <laughs> you do, and do two year, between two years surely that'll be fine <laughs> yeah. um, and we were doing we've, we are doing our first beer tasting event um, in I believe in April but it's again that sold out so we're going to do another one on Father's Day I think mm-hmm. um, makes sense so yeah um, there's always something to look out for on at the mm. tap room for sure definitely yeah. No, you you sold me on twenty four inch pizza now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. I know whatever <laughs> we have to see, w- yeah, whatever we have to see tonight is just not going to be. It's not going to cut no, it, is it? It's not going to be pizza. 
<laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, we're, we're definitely to do Middlesbrough. Well, it's only about an hour away, isn't it? It's not far. It's not yeah. far. It's not yeah. far at all. Yeah, well, you'll have to let me know if you're coming because I'll uh, I'll make sure I'll come down and see you. Yeah, I'm, oh, sure, I'm, sure we, I'm sure we can wind up Saturday. I'm sure we can <laughs> yeah. wind up. Yeah, Anna, Anna will if, if, convince Anna with pizza or food, then yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah so it's how, we, it's how we work it. Anna drives, I, I buy her food. Then there we go. That's it. Yeah. Job done. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you get to have a few beers as well then. It's a win-win. Happy days. Yeah. Everyone's Everybody a- wins. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> um, but more importantly than James, with, with all these events going on, where can people find out about what's going on at uh, Play Brooker? Where can they catch up with any uh, any important updates and such? Um, well, we have two Instagram pages we have and Facebook pages. We have one for the sort of that's more sort of brand slash brewery based, which mm-hmm. is just uh, at Play Bruco, I believe. Um, and then there's at Play Brew Tap Room, um, which is obviously for the tap room, which I think a lot of the content does sort of cross over. Um, yeah, but mm-hmm. it is if if you are interested, it is it is worth following both because um, we do post different things on each one occasionally. And, you know, I'd, I'd hate for people to miss out. Um, and we also have a Lucky Ted's Instagram for the for the pizza. Um, for the pizza place, so yeah, I'm I'm just looking awesome. back at this this account for the the tap room, and I mean I mean, look at the size of that pizza. I mean, yes. <laughs> for a start, that is awesome. and then, and then, yeah. and then I'm, re- yeah. I'm reading the description, a mighty boosh quiz, and it's like, oh my god, yeah, pizza and mighty boosh. It's like that, that's boosh, just, that's wow, literally... yeah. Yeah, you that could have a... had a cardboard cut out of Noel Fielding if you'd won that. Quiz. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Uh, that is, uh, oh, I don't feel like again it, anything's going to live up to that. It's like, no. <laughs> mighty boost quiz, a mighty boost because what more could you want? That'd be I'd be my element. That'd be a yeah. Bit. Aaron Aaron does do a, does do a great job. He he always keeps it interesting in the in the tap room. Yeah, but no, I mean I mean just scrolling through there. I mean yeah, I, I highly recommend anyone checks out both uh, both pages and and comes and gives you a visit, which we will now have to give you a visit now you've, you've sold us on that now mate <laughs> pizza and beer what more could people want you know it's like it's a, it's a perfect combo isn't it so uh so yeah we'll have to uh, we'll have to come pay you a visit but james we'll uh we'll let you get off thank you um very very much for joining us this evening it's been a pleasure um but it'll be great to, no, thank uh, you for having me no you're welcome it'll be great to uh, to catch up with you in person at some point which i suppose is a, a, a separate question which has just come to me are you doing any festivals events this year are you, are you out in the field at any point this year um honestly it's, uh, I don't I don't think we have anything lined up in that sense at the minute. Okay. Um we are we are a very small team. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. there's there's myself and the apprentice brewer Lewis who deal with all of the production stuff. There's Phil and Sophie in the office, there's Aaron in the tap room, and then there's Toby and Becca uh, as the bar staff. So we are a very small team and we yeah. don't often have the time to, to make these things. Yeah, They're usually, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of time out of the business and oh, as yeah. much as, as much as we'd love to be, be there, um, it, it would just hold everything up back at the yeah. back at site. So, so uh, yeah, to answer your question, no, I, I don't think we will. We, we do go to them as, as punters yeah, when yeah. and where mm-hmm. we can, but, but in terms of actually, um, and we usually wear our play brew jumpers, so feel free to come and say hello if you spot spot us. I thought, um, I thought you were going to say we usually go unbranded then, just so people don't know. <laughs> just like, Undercover. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would probably be wise, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> just no, it's peace, just like, oh, just go away. Just, I just want to do <laughs> please. please. <laughs> no, it's... Um... So, yeah, we you, you might see us at festivals but we won't be we won't be pouring at any, be as far as i'm okay. aware that's fair you know it's it is one of these things that sort of perception in this world that people are oh, they've got ah, oh, they've got they've, they've got a guy or a you know a woman who does it or yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, they've, yeah always, it's, they've always it's... got somebody it's like well no that person might just be the person that does everything you know that is the yeah. the yeah, person yeah. for everything so no yeah, I, yeah. Uh, no i fully appreciate it mate so but yeah we'll uh we'll make a trip up well, it's, we'll just make a trip up yes. and come and come and pay you a visit. Please do. If Cat Cat Wangland to give us a lift, we'll we'll find a train. Well, I'm sure there'll be a, 
Easy. It'll probably be a train yeah. to, uh, to, to oh, carry aye. us to and from. So, yeah, we'll we'll sort something out, mate. But, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. We, like I say, we appreciate it. That, that hazy pail's gone down uh, very, very well. Um, no, it's it's been a pleasure. To... Thank you very much. It's nice seeing to talk what... to you guys. Yeah, you too, mate. And I look forward to seeing what uh, the rest of the year brings for you. But, uh, James, thank you. Aaron, as always, thank you. And uh, oh, Thank you. We'll, thank you, James, uh... mate. Yeah, thank we'll, you. Uh, Cheers, Aaron. Speak to you very, very soon.